chance from the next question. The wedge of mass 3 kilograms rests on a smooth horizontal table. One of its faces with smooth makes an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal. The character of mass 1 kilogram is placed in this face and the system is released from rest. And the acceleration A of the wedge and the acceleration F of the particle relative to the wedge. So write A and F in terms of I and J and then add in, show that the actual acceleration of the particle is of magnitude by over seven J. All right, so just to explain what I and J is, okay? So imagine I go, imagine I would speed a, a velocity three I plus five J. Vector basically means I go three meters to the right, and five meters up every second, okay? Now, my magnitude would not is the actual uh, Pythagoras theorem. So it would be uh, 3 squared plus 5 squared, 34, and then 34 would be my magnitude. Okay. So that's what I and J means in the context of this question. Okay. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. And then please remember that. You, uh, in this question, you have an acceleration. If you're, if you're on an object, so I'm just trying to create a scenario for you here, is uh, imagine that you're on a moving car, and the car is going five meters per second squared. And then for some, so for some reason, this car has like a, like a ladder on it or something like that. And, and once again, it's a superhero movie and you're, Running up the ladder at, I don't know, two meters per second squared acceleration up. What we're looking for is how do we change, how do we relate the two meters per second relative, to, sorry, two meters per second you'd be doing, if, if the truck was stationary, you'd still be doing two meters per second up, up the ladder. However, the truck is moving with an acceleration of five meters per second squared. Overall, what does that make the human actually do? So if I was to create the, if I was to try and find the human's acceleration in terms of i direction and j direction, what I'd have to do is with this one here, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, break it up into its components. The uh, the yellow part of the acceleration, and then I'd have to break it up into the green part. So if you get what I'm saying, I'm just going to make up an angle for argument's sake. I'm going to make up the angle 30 degrees. Ladder. So this would be 2 cos 30 in the right direction, and this would be 2 sin 30 in the j direction. So I'd have to add, basically, I'd have to add uh, the 2 cos 30 to the 5 meters per second to get how far he's going, how fast he's going to the right. And then the j component would be the 2 sin 30. And then I'd get the hypotenuse of that question, of that answer, okay? That's the best as I can explain the whole process of this question. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw the diagram like I did in, in question one. Okay, so in question one, we got a 45 degree angle, which is one of the nicer ones to deal with. Uh, 45 degrees. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, we have the particle, which is of uh, three, 3 kilograms for this, so this is a 3g going downwards for the mass of the wedge, and the 1 kilogram here, so this is going to be a 1g acting straight down, the actual particle, okay, and it's going down with acceleration f, and the wedge is moving at acceleration A. So we're going to do what we did last time where we draw the diagrams separately, okay? Drawing the diagrams separately creates more space, makes it easier to understand. So we spend sort of the first couple of minutes of this question just trying to, you get faster at them, but uh, you, you sort of explain it out neatly, it's supposed to weigh here. One kilogram. So this is going to be 1G straight down. Like last time, now that if that's 45, 
that's 45, and in turn, 45. So in this case, uh, angle here will be 45 degrees. This will be G cos 45, and this will be G on 45. Put them in the calculator, you should get uh, G over root 2 and uh, G over root 2. And some of you might get uh, root 2 over 2, which is the same thing as. And change two into root two by root two. You get one over. Okay, so I prefer to keep it over root two. Now, this has acceleration F and also has reaction force four. And as we stated earlier, this is not a plane, it's a wedge. This implies that R is not the same as root two as it would be with a plane. Okay. So the, the wedge is given way and getting pushed to the right, which means that these forces here are not balanced. There is an acceleration in that direction. Okay, that's the wedge done. Now, if we want, we can do the wedge. Uh, we can't do the wedge equation yet. We have to do the diagram of the wedge. Sorry, my thoughts. So we're going to do the diagram of the wedge. So here's the wedge. Now, what is it experiencing? Well, Wedge weighs three kilograms, which means it's going. It has three kilograms going downwards. So that's three g going downwards. It has a reaction for a reaction for s because the wedge itself is not sinking into the table. It's not drilling down into the table, so they're balanced. And what's causing the uh, the wedge to move to the right in the first place would be the reaction force r. We were talking about earlier. For every action is an equal but opposite reaction. This means that must be a reaction for R in this direction here. So we'll take the last one, that's 45 degrees. Draw a line straight up, that's 45, and that there must also be 45. Now it's 45 degrees. Down, across. So this is going to be uh, R, uh, R cos 45 and R sine 45. So this little uh, blue angle in here, which I'm shading in blue, that's 45 degrees. R cos 45 and R sine 45. R cos 45 and R sine 45 are R over root 2. And Next thing I have to do is the acceleration triangle. As I discussed earlier, the acceleration is going directly to the right. So the acceleration is going back to the right. If I draw it parallel to the plane, then I draw it perpendicular, like so. And Five degrees, ninety. And that's a. Since this is a cos forty-five, because that's the adjacent side, and this is a sine forty-five, because this is the opposite. A over root two in both cases. Angle done. Now, remember this a over root two is the cos cosine part of the equation, which I'll highlight. Yellow. A root 2 is combating the F. They act in different directions. The F is acting diagonally left down, while the A over root 2 is acting diagonally right up. A over root, root 2 is acting, acting diagonally right down. A, a is moving across. Okay, the way to think of it is imagine I want to go from here, start to end. Pat straight across, straight to the right, or we can go diagonally right up and then diagonally right down. That tells you how the directions work. Same way for gravity, 
you can start there and end at the bottom, or you can go diagonally right down and get the depth across, right? So that's why that's called the uh, kangaroo effect, okay? Now, that. now we're going to do what we did last time. We're going to work with a uh, parallel to the axis. We're going to do the particle parallel to the axis. We're talking about the uh, one kilogram object here. So solely focusing on this part of the, the F equal off is going, it's sliding downhill, so it's going down this way here. Okay, what's causing that to happen? Well, the G over root 2 is causing that to happen. Going down this here. And there's no other force if there was friction here, it would be opposing it, but there is no friction in the expression. Next thing, what accelerations take place? Well, we have F going diagonally left down, but it's being opposed by A over root 2 acting diagonally right up. But remember, it's acting on the particle itself. Sorry, the, the particle is traveling on the wedge. Therefore, the wedge's acceleration affects the particle's acceleration. So it's one kilogram, so it's ma usually. m is one. Acceleration is f acting the acne left down minus a root two, which is acting the acne right up. Next thing. This will be over root two. Uh, I'm inclined to multiply both sides by root 2, so I'm going to get root 2 f minus a g. This is my parallel equation, and I'm going to highlight it in yellow. Next thing I'm going to work on is the perpendicular equation. Now, once again, as I stated in, in question 1, f is, is, is parallel to the, to the slope, while the perpendicular to the slope is talking about these forces. R, and we're talking about the G over root 2 here. And the acceleration we're talking about is this acceleration here, the A over root 2, which is in the same direction. So, force, which is uh, going to be uh, parallel and perpendicular, but we know that the, the wedge is given way. Net force is going to be pushing that wedge away. We're going to have a uh, we're going to have g over root 2, take away r, which is acting in the Now, the f is only the a root 2 part because the f can't be affected by it, so it's going to be uh, uh, ma, mass times acceleration. The mass acceleration in that particular direction is a over root 2. And that will equal. Uh, equal G over root 2, take away, leave it there. So currently that's my second equation, and this is the perpendicular equation, which I will color in green. I'll do what happened there. Right. Green. Next thing we're going to do is the wedge going directly to the right. So wedge is moving to the right. Uh, the weight of the wedge kilograms so mass times acceleration going to be 3a now remember the acceleration of the wedge is just a going directly to the right 3a no bother there what causes it to move in that direction well you can see the r value which is causing that to move in that direction is that r over root two, which is right there so that equals r over root two Cross multiply and we get r equals 3 root 2. Okay. Now, what I can do is I can sort out this r here and I can say it's 1 over a root 2 equals g over root 2 minus 3 root 2 a. I'm going to multiply both sides by root 2. I'll give everything a root 2 as a denominator. So root 2 times root 2 is 2, 3 times 2. Okay, that's going to be uh, minus 6a, and then we that'll be just g, and that'll just be a. Then move over one side, and we're going to get 7a equals g, and then we're going to get a equals g. So 
good news there is that we nailed that. A is a G over 7. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to have to find out what F is. So here's F here. So we're going to say is a root 2 F G plus A. We know that A is G over 7. So we know that root 2 F G plus G over 7. So it's going to be uh, that's the same thing as 7 G over 7. 8G over 7, then F on its own is going to be 8G over 7. Now, that's it. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to try and find out the magnitude. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is we have to arrange this in terms of i and j, in the i and j direction. Now we're quite lucky because remember a goes directly to the right, so we already have g over 7 i. But the problem is the 8g over 7 root 2, that goes diagonally left down at an angle of 45 degrees. So I'm supposed to redraw my, my actual uh, wedge here. Draw my wedge, like so. What happens here is this is 8g over 7 root 2. And it's coming down at 45 degrees. Now I've got to resolve that into the i and j directions. The i and j direction here, that's the direction and that's the j direction. Now it's actually a negative i because going to the right is plus 5i. Left of 5 is minus 5i. I'm going to the left positive. So I have a positive j and a negative y. So just compare that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do what we always do. It's going to be 8j over 7 root 2 plus 5. That's going to turn into this far. As it's going to the left, it's actually going to be minus 4g over 7. Nextly, what we're going to have here is plus 4g over 7. What happens when you do 8g over 7 root 2? Multiply by 45 4g over 7. Now, what's going to happen in both cases is that this is where this, this acceleration here is being combated by A, because A is moving to the right, but this part is moving directly to the left. So remember, A was going at G over 7. Overall, G over 7 take away 4G over 7, which is minus 3G over 7, I. Overall, you're going left. You're going up with 4G over 7, so overall, the acceleration of the particle is upwards of 4g over 7. So it actually has a diagonal up and left overall speed, which is unusual. Hard to picture. Now, I'm going to get the magnitude. So to do the magnitude, what we're going to do is I'm going to draw my triangle, like so. Up and to the left. 3g over 7, or minus g over 7. And this is 4g over 7. The magnitude term, we need to find the magnitude x. So it's going to be x squared equals uh, minus 3g over 7 squared. 4g over 7 squared. Love all in the calculator. And we're going to get uh, 25g squared over 49. Square root it. And we're just going to get 5 over 7g. And I believe that is what I was asked to prove. Yes, it is, and that is three done.